What's up guys, Rogue9 here. I've finally made some decent headway in testing all of the new guns added to Rainbow Six Siege with Operation Parabellum, and today I want to briefly talk about a couple of gun behaviours that just don't seem quite right. On the one hand, many players have been questioning the new fire rate of Glaz's OTS-03 and beyond that, one of the new Italian guns is simply ridiculously powerful and I can only assume that this is some kind of mistake. So, how fast is the new OTS-03 really and which mystery gun is now one of the most powerful weapons at any range? Let's go and find out. Many thanks to App Bounty for sponsoring today's video. Do you fancy earning yourself some gift cards from shops such as Amazon, Steam, PSN, and Xbox, which you could then use to buy R6 credits? Well, App Bounty might just be the thing you're looking for, and getting your hands on those gift cards could not be easier. Step 1 Use the link in the description below to download App Bounty from the Google Play Store or App Store for free. When prompted, you can use the invite code ROGUE9 to get 50 free points added to your account right away. Step 2 is to start earning more points by downloading and trying out the free games and apps under the Targets tab. To get the most out of the app, I recommend heading over to the Play and Earn section. Here you earn points based on the amount of time you spend in the various apps on offer. And here's a secret tip, you could even put your device onto your charger, open one of the Play and Earn apps through App Bounty and simply leave it running while you're doing something else. But don't tell them I said that. And that's all there is to it, so go ahead and start earning yourself some rewards by clicking on the link in the description below. Back to Rainbow Six now, and starting out with Glaz's rifle, those of you who saw the addendum to the Operation Parabellum patch notes will know that with the latest patch, his fire rate was ostensibly boosted from 220 RPM to 235 RPM. This is such a minor buff that it really should be almost unnoticeable, and yet the gun feels and sounds very different, which has raised a few eyebrows amongst the community. To get to the bottom of the true fire rate of the OTS-03 in-game, I ran a total of 20 trials in which I dumped the full magazine as quickly as possible. And the first thing I noticed when studying the results was that the time it took to fire off the 10 to 11 bullets was rather inconsistent. My best run was firing 11 bullets in 2.147 seconds, and my worst result was 10 bullets in 2.411 seconds. That's almost 200 milliseconds slower in total, and the time between shots was a massive 24.8% longer. Absolutely horrendous. As I progressed through the trials, I noticed that clicking as fast as possible and even using a mouse macro to assist me in clicking as fast as absolutely possible tended to result in hang-ups in the firing sequence and slower firing results. The best results came from trials where I didn't spam my mouse button but instead tried to get into a fast but steady rhythm. So I think that with some practice, any player should be able to learn the maximum fire rate for the rifle and should be able to time their clicks in such a way as to always achieve a pretty high fire rate. If you frequently play Glass, I would encourage you to play around with this in Terrorist Hunt mode or in a local custom match to get a feel for the right firing rhythm. But now over to the all-important question. How fast is the OTSO3 now? 235 RPM? Maybe more. Those of you who have seen previous fire rate videos of mine will know that in order to calculate the fire rate, we need to divide 60 by the time to empty the mag in seconds divided by the number of shots fired minus 1. For a full explanation as to why this is the correct formula, see the link to my previous video explaining this in the end card or description below. Applying this formula to our current tests, my worst trial resulted in a fire rate of 223.97 RPM, somewhat below the expected 235. But my second slowest trial out of the 20 already resulted in a measured fire rate of 234.27 RPM and of course that means that all of my other trials resulted in fire rates that were higher than should be possible, with the max measured fire rate being 279.46 RPM. So with a relatively smooth run, I managed to achieve 280 RPM, which is 18.9% more than should be possible. And here is the trial once again to show you what this looks and sounds like. 
and even though this was an exceptionally good mag dump, my average fire rate for the 20 trials was still a respectable 250.8 RPM or 6.7% higher than possible. The bottom line is that if you had a sneaking suspicion that Glass's rifle currently shoots a lot faster than it's supposed to, then you were absolutely right. The patch notes addendum told us that Glass was supposed to get a mini buff this season, maybe to balance out all of the new heat vision cameras that have been added to the defending team, but it appears that this buff has ended up a little stronger than intended. Up to at least 18.9% stronger to be precise. Finally, before moving on to our mystery OP weapon, there is one last question to answer and that is of course, will this unintended overbuff be a problem? Will Glass now be OP? Okay, that was actually two last questions, but they were kind of the same so that still counts. Glass requires two body or arm shots to kill against any armor type as long as there are no rook plates involved. Firing two shots should take 255 milliseconds, but can be currently achieved in around 211 milliseconds, so 44 milliseconds faster. That's not an insignificant difference, but considering that the close range average time to kill against level 1 armor is around 170 milliseconds and around 209 milliseconds against level 3 armor for all weapons, this added buff makes the OTSO3 competitive but not really OP. I do hope that these fire rate inconsistencies can be ironed out and that we will see a hard limit applied soon, but in the meantime I don't think that this overbuff will cause too much of a problem for most players. It could be challenging to deal with at the highest levels of ranked gameplay or in pro league, but for us mere mortals I see consequences as being relatively limited. And now finally over to one of the new weapons that is far more powerful than I was expecting it to be and many of you may have already guessed correctly that I'm referring to the Keratos 357. A 357 Magnum revolver is of course nothing new for Rainbow Six Siege since the GIGN forces have had access to a weapon that should be virtually identical to the Keratos since the very first release of the game, namely the LFP 586. So how is the Keratos OP when the LFP has been fine this whole time? Let's compare them. On paper, in terms of their stats, these weapons are identical. Same close range damage of 78 points up to 12 meters distance, same double action fire rate, I measured it at up to 450 RPM, same mobility of 45, whatever that is supposed to mean, the same capacity of 6 shots and the ability to attach a laser for better hip fire accuracy. But already without digging any further there is a massive advantage that the Keratos has and that is the recoil. The LFP kicks like a mule and according to the recoil pattern a first shot at waist height will result in a second shot that will sail clean over your opponent's head and will have a huge horizontal dispersion. The Keratos without modifications on the other hand will still be able to land a second, third and even fourth shot on target and once you attach the muzzle brake, recoil will be even more manageable. So there's the first massive advantage, much lower recoil makes the Keratos viable when spam firing whereas the LFP only works at a controlled fire rate. Besides the muzzle brake, the Keratos also has the option of attaching a suppressor. Suppressors on revolvers do not usually work since the expanding gases from the fired cartridge will not only explode out of the front of the barrel but also around the chamber and the Chiapa Rhino, the real life gun that the Keratos is modelled on, is no exception here. So having a suppressor on this pistol wouldn't work in real life but that's just a little side note. The main point is that in Rainbow Six Siege you can attach a suppressor with all the usual advantages and disadvantages and at the end of the day more choice is better than less. But those are only the obvious advantages. If we compare the hip fire spread of the two guns without lasers attached, you can see that here the Keratos is also much better and it could even be considered viable as a hip fire weapon at close ranges, especially if you also attach a laser. In terms of ammo reserves, the Keratos also comes out on top with a total of 54 bullets at the beginning of the round, while the LFP only gets a measly 42. Fair enough, if you manage to use up that much secondary ammo in any given multiplayer match, something has already gone terribly wrong, but hey, two more reloads is definitely not a bad thing to have. 
So there are plenty of advantages that the Keratos has over the LFP, but I mentioned that I believe that this gun is too powerful, and it's true. For some bizarre reason, the damage drop-off of this new revolver is like no other sidearm we have ever seen in Rainbow Six. The drop-off for pistols is between 12 and 22 meters, and this is also true for the Keratos. So far all still normal, but where even the most powerful primary weapons, the DMRs, will see a huge damage drop off, the Keratos stays unbelievably powerful, delivering a massive 65 points of damage per shot at any distance beyond 22 meters. So with every shot out of this handgun you will always get between 78 and 65 points of damage. Here check out this test where I created so much distance to Maestro over there that the ping with its 100 meter max range is not even capable of measuring how far it is. At this range the DMRs will only do between 38 and 51 points of damage and only Glaz's OTS and the BOSG can rival the Keratos's insane 65 points. By comparison, the LFP would only do 34 points of damage and the D50 35 points of damage once you get beyond 22 meters or more. What does 65 points of damage mean against the three different types of armor? Well, as long as you hit the upper body, any operator will be a two shot down or kill at any range. In theory, level 2 and level 3 armor operators with rook plates would take up to three shots, but once again, if you come across attackers wearing rook armor, something has already gone horribly wrong. Why does the Keratos do damage that is comparable or even greater than that of the DMRs with a great fire rate and very manageable recoil? I have no clue. And if this revolver is really supposed to be this strong, then why is the LFP so much weaker at range? No, this has to be a mistake. Look, even the in-game description says that it is designed for high damage at short to medium range. And there you have it, both the OTS-03 and the Keratos-357 appear to be more powerful than intended right now, so I guess make the most of it while it lasts? I'm sure that both of these issues will be fixed at some point, although who knows how long it might take. Finally, for those of you who like live streams, I am now also on Twitch, so go and follow twitch.tv slash rogue9 if you want to ever catch me while I'm live. And with that, as always, thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next episode.